good morning once again. For us, it's morning. Sure so is. we don't know where you guys are, but it doesn't matter. We're in the Lord's day. Uh, I'm Gentleman Jim the Taylor. Victoria Baylor, dressmaker, and you have found yourself at the Taylor, Taylor and Dressmaker dress Show. Uh, good morning to everybody, as Mr. Jim said. We hope you are having a wonderful day. Mm -hmm. And if you're rolling out of bed, we hope that day that's ahead of you will be wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, we missed you guys last week. We kind of took a little break. Uh, sent a Facebook message saying there wouldn't be a video, but soliciting you guys' uh, ideas for future shows. Right. So thank right. you for you guys uh, for submitting that because we're starting a whole new set of shows and we would love to have your input. We sure right? would. We sure would. So on this show, though, we are going to tackle a pretty big topic, right, Mr. It, it really is. It's one that people, some people are skeptical about using certain fabrics, and it can be a big deal, so you have to be very careful. Hopefully, the tips that we give you will help you along this journey, because this time of year, a lot of this fabric is used. That's right. So we are going to talk about sewing, ta-da, velvets. And, you know, as Mr. Jim said, which is so true, tis the season. We are mm -hmm. in the holiday season. Mm -hmm. We see velvets everywhere. We everywhere. see them in uh, Christmas stockings, little girls' dresses, mm -hmm. everything. Grown women's wear, velvet they jackets. Do. They do. They How do you do. see it usually? Well, I, I see it the same way. And we're going to give some tips on clothing that is that wears better. Well, the item of clothes that wears better. Uh, for argument's sake, a velvet jacket wears better than if a lady made a velvet dress. And I'm going to give you some, some tidbits on that and why. That's right. So we're going to get into that. But for starters, you know, um, velvet actually is like a really popular staple, again, during this time of year. And a lot of people will shy away from using it. And, you know, you can go anywhere to read about it. So we're not here to cover the full gamut no. of information. That's not what this is for. But we are here to kind of give you a little bit of extra tidbits and tips to kind of get you over any intrepidation you might have about sewing with um, velvet. So it's really simple. It's not a hard fabric to sew with. We'll get into that. But as far as uses, as we talked about, just kind of get your mouth watering and tempt you to start to want to sew with it. I love particularly using velvet to sew holiday dresses for my daughter. And it's real simple. I will make the bodice out of velvet for the most part. Some, you know, really pretty kind of polyester velvet. And then we'll grab like a really beautiful base that's, fabric for the skirt nice. of the dress mm -hmm. and get really ornate like that. Uh, this one's cute because it has, what's the dog? Are these little schnauzers? I forgot what it is. No, Scotty, <laughs> Scotty little, dogs. That's right. We'll call them, they're little Scottish dogs. We got, I think it's schnauzers, but mm -hmm. really cute fabric with that. You can see the little guys there. And it's some kind of embossed velvet-like yeah. material. Yeah. That's a good question. What's that? Velvet, velour, velveteens. Absolutely. There are all types, they're kind of considered the pile fabrics, right? The yeah. fabrics where yeah. there's a raised surface mm -hmm. and you can touch and always tell there's that pile That's of texture. Right. Um, but they might fall into all the same family, but not all, not all created equally. They're not. They're um, not. And the reason we're highlighting velvet is because it's the most difficult to sew out of the it rest really, of them. It really is. It so really is. if you can get velvet, you can handle velour, velveteen, yeah. all of that. Um, and Mr. Jim and I were talking, the biggest difference between velveteen and velour is that velveteen is just kind of slightly, it's a, I think it's longer hairs than what mm -hmm. velvet mm -hmm. is. So, and it's a lot easier to sew. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so on to, let's see, you sewing with velvet, um, the different types. So, what we'll show now is that, that piece back that's right, this, we'll just leave that one out there, is that there's actually different types of velvets, and I did not know that there's a, a chiffon velvet. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen one of those? I, I have not. What does that look like? It, it really looks like the same fabric, except as you know, chiffon is softer, more flowier, mm -hmm. uh, and that, whereas some of the velvet has a lot more body. That's say. right. So that, that kind of determines the difference. And then the difference in how and where you use your velvet determines the garment that you make. Now, you wouldn't make a jacket out of chiffon velvet. Yes, that's just... Because it'd be too soft, yeah. too flowy. It wouldn't hold body at all. That's right. Uh, same thing is you wouldn't use a velvet velvet to make 
a dress if you want a flowy dress. That's because right. Because it's, it's not going to flow. That's right. It's so not gonna flow. here's like a cotton velvet. So recently I was sewing costumes. If you follow my blog for the Kansas City Ballet, mm -hmm. and they we were I guess hired to make six dresses, two capes. One of the capes is actually two types of velvet. Um, in the cape. So this is a cotton velvet and actually has stretch to has it. Has a little stretch to it here. And then this is the rayon velvet. And it's interesting because I always thought velvets were created the same. They are not. No. And this thing has been the bane of my existence. Not really, just joking. But it has been a little bit of a challenge to sew two different types of velvet together, even when they mm -hmm. characteristically yeah, act they, different. They, they, they're, uh, don't ride together. That's right. And no. they behave differently. So Absolutely. that's important though. So this is a rayon velvet. So as you can see, this one actually wrinkles like Crazy. I yeah, always hated yeah. that about Velvet that. will wrinkle. And it's really loose and flowy versus a cotton velvet. See how stable this is? Um, it's a lot easier to sew one of these. And do it, these make really good jackets, right? The yeah, cotton this variety? type makes a better jacket. Okay. All righty. This type can make a jacket, but it doesn't really hold. Like I think that's this. the polyester type you right. get from Joanne. So we'll open this up. And to Mr. Jim's point, he's absolutely right. See, this... It's kind of like medium weight, yeah, and yeah, it will hold, yeah. but it's not as sturdy as this type. So mm -hmm. I totally agree. So mm -hmm. basically, when deciding what to wear or what to make, mm -hmm. choose the appropriate You really type. need to because okay. it's very tricky. And uh, when you get into this, uh, I always do the crush test, and a lot of people do. Oh, you take idea. it and you crush it up, <laughs> and then you see what it's going to do. That's right. You know, especially on velvets, velours, velveteen, anything that has a pile surface. You want to see what it's going to do. And then you make your decisions. And once you do that, take your hand and see, okay, does it smooth out? Because steam pays a big thing in how you handle this. That's true. It's the steam. You want to get into that a little? Yes, we will. And we're going to talk. Let's just go ahead and highlight that yeah. as one of the difficulties. Some of the challenges with sewing with velvet is that it's easily marred by pins. Mm -hmm. So be careful. So if you're sewing it, you can't really take out stitches a lot of times because it will leave a mark, mm -hmm. an impression. So you want to sew carefully. Um, some other challenges are is it burns easily. So we'll talk about some of the steaming techniques mm -hmm. that we use so you don't burn your precious fabric. Because sometimes this stuff is expensive. It really is. The really expensive kind can be like twenty, thirty dollars a yard. It can be. Um, can it be. creeps when you sew, so we'll get around how to deal with that. It frays very easily, so you know serging is pretty good with handling that. And then it can be really bulky to handle, especially if you're getting in corners and stuff. We'll talk about some mm -hmm. quick tips with that. So let's go ahead and get into that. Um, as far as the marring with pins, you just want to be careful on how you <laughs> you put it together. Uh, we recommend basting sometimes. It's a really great way. I recommend way. basting all the time. I know, right? Yeah, know. basically. So before you sew, baste. Basting is just a good practice in general. We it, it recommend really is. that. It, it, yeah. In the tailoring world, we base almost everything. Like you, you hear me say, I don't use pins. Now I use these as my ten pins, but I'm still basting because this way I can maneuver. I can push. I can push a little to the side, slide it back. Sometimes if you just use pins, you forget about the other side because there's always two pieces joined together. And a lot of times with just pins, you could pin it in a spot and the back side slide and you think you have the same mm -hmm. equal seam size, but you're not looking at the back side. That's right. And that's why I say these help you maneuver that. You should always be working your fingers towards the edge to make sure that the edges line up. Absolutely. And I love this. Um, I think we you can buy a basting thread from anywhere. Basting thread. And yeah. it's kind of cool because it actually has basting. It says it at the bottom. It tells you what it is. And it's a little bit different. It's kind of, uh, how would you describe this kind of thread? It's kind well, of wax coated. It, 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 it is. And, and it looks coarser. It's thicker right. than others. See, but the good thing about it, it breaks fairly easy. And you can pull it out you once can pull you it hand out. Yeah, sew it. It just slides it right out slick. there. I love mm -hmm. this stuff. So to prevent, this actually handles two problems. So the problem with marring in the fabric, so leaving pin marks, if you mm -hmm. hand baste it, mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. avoid a lot of that. That's less pins, mm -hmm. use long stitches. You don't have an issue with that. Yeah. And yeah. this also will prevent the sliding or the, um, how would we describe that? The way it creeps. I like the way yeah. that I wrote it down. Yeah. It creeps when it sews. You have two piled fabrics on top. 
top and essentially when you're trying to sew them together we all know how this works your feed dogs is pulling underneath and then you have the other piece moving so it's kind of like an oppositional mm -hmm. thing happening so you end up with two pieces that should be equal kind of being offset mm -hmm. so to prevent that base them first basting is and don't be in a big hurry slow down there you go you should really almost walk it down opposed to zip 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 Absolutely. because what happens is the faster you sew the more it pulls and pushes See, if you walk it down a little slower, it doesn't do it that fast. And totally that, that's how they come out uneven because you, the top part gets slid downward. That's right. The bottom part gets pushed backwards there. And the faster you go, the more that happens. So if you slow down a little, and always remember whenever you're sewing this and any other fabric, let your fingers help you that's along. Right. Absolutely. Because it keeps it keeps it flat, keeps the surface, keeps the bubbles out. Uh, all of my students and my gang that are around me, they always see me work my hands when I sew. It doesn't matter what I sew, I'm always working my fingertips to make sure that I get it smooth and flat. That's right. It's almost like there's a science of just using your hands yeah, in yeah. sewing manipulation, that in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And speaking of, you were also right, for those of you that don't like to hand base, some people like to sew mm -hmm. really quickly, we have our traditional walking foot. Mm -hmm. So walking foots usually help with piled fabrics. Yeah. This has been in my sewing machine. Oops, I've never used it. <laughs> so oh, I'm more of a oh, oh, oh. I'm more of a hand basin kind of chick. Oh, so you know. But anyway, walking foots are great. Actually, I think I have used this once, but not with velvet. But it's really they good. have a feet. The feed dog are the teeth that's under it. That's right. And a lot of places that make manufacture velvet, they have a Teflon. Tooth. That's right. Teflon See, is great too. Because the teeth on a regular one is gri is geared, grip, you know, grips it and pulls it and snatches it. The Teflon one slides it. The difference between using the Teflon foot, because it doesn't have the teeth to pull it along, so you got to help that one along. That's why I say your fingers help you, because you got to right. help that one along. That's right. And you could get the Teflon bottom as well as the uh, presser foot can oh. also have Teflon on. I didn't know that. The garment industry, or the, I guess with the garment production mm -hmm. stuff, they have mm -hmm. all kinds of nifty mm -hmm. tips and tricks. That's true. Because this would, if you had to sew this all day and didn't sew it with the right kind of foot yeah. and stuff like that, it would drive you crazy. Okay. So there's that. And um, I guess we could talk about burning or pressing. Um, let's see. Let's talk about pressing velvet. Miss Jim, go ahead with some of your tips. But before I give well, you the tips on pressing, let me give you the tips on cutting this. Oh, very true. You can't forget about that. Absolutely. All velvet has a nap, and it has a direction that the nap goes. Nap should always go down the garment, not up. So when you cut velvet, velour, or any one of these with a nap, you have to cut the full pattern in the same direction. Because if you turn it the opposite way, the garment's going to look discolored. It's not discolored. It's that one nap is going one way, the other nap is going down. That's right. Usually when you get velvet or velour or any one of them, you have to buy some extra material because you cannot flip-flop the pattern. The, all the pattern has to go the same direction, and it should go down. I see a lot of jackets out there. I alter jackets for people, velour or velvet, and I can see One's up and one's down oh, because so. manufacturers, they don't care. <laughs> oh, no. But it's a different shading yeah. that you'll get because one is up, one is down. Yeah, you can see you it know? too. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, when you rub, just rub your hand along it and you can feel if it's real smooth, the nap is going down. If it feels a little scruffy going up, the nap is going up. So when you cut it, you've got to make sure that you put your pattern on it going the same way because if you don't and you just turn it you think that's harmless when you make your garment up it's going to look oh that's discolored it's not discolored it's just that the nap on one is up and on the other panel is down so you have to make sure all the nap goes the same way that's very 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 important and this is what people don't understand because they're trying to squeeze the pattern onto the amount of fabric so when you purchase it now, I can't always say how much you need to purchase. My little, it's not really a trick, it's my measurement 
device on how I do this. On my cutting table, I've got yard markers locked off. And what I do is I take the pattern and I place it within the yard marker and I place everything, especially on the law, going the same way. And I want to see how the pattern fits within a certain area. Then I know how much fabric to buy. I don't just guess at it because this can be expensive. Sure you can. know, you and, and what you don't want to do is run up short. That's right. Because any garment, you, any part of the pattern that doesn't work on it, you have to buy a full yard. You can't buy a quarter of a yard That's because true. you yeah. cannot add to the Because you can't piece the sleeve. No, yeah, you can't piece long. it there. See, <laughs> so if you know how much yard is you need by laying your pattern all the same way then you figure out how much you, you would need to buy. Because, you know, most fabric stores will sell it in less dimensions than a yard. So if you normally needed three yards for something, and all of a sudden when you laid your pattern out, it called for three and a quarter, you can buy three and a quarter. Mm -hmm. See? But if you come up short, then you got to buy a whole nother yard, and then you have a piece to throw away. All these fragments. Mm -hmm. Well said. And it's funny because while you were talking, I was looking at the nap. I didn't realize on this particular velvet, it's so short, you really can't see the direction. You really no, kind of have to go to. off a of feeling. It's funny. To. I never yeah. thought about that before. Mm -hmm. and, and I think because also because it's black, that makes it a little bit more yeah. tricky to, or yeah. navy blue or whatever it is. It's really dark. Uh, so very, yeah, mm -hmm. very good point. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so on to some pressing tips, mm -hmm. techniques that we use. Uh, this is the part where it can get really scary for people. Yeah. You literally can ruin your fabric. You really can. <laughs> just, just the pressing. Just the pressing alone. So we want to make it really simple for you. Very foolproof. Don't be nervous. I think one of the biggest tips is not too much steam, not too much pressure for your iron. No. That's the number no. one tip. And then when you press, press on a light surface. You're working with something that has texture. It's a piling here. You can't use a flat surface to press this stuff on. Um, because A, you can collapse the piling. So we right. were talking about it earlier. Or you can leave an impression. I love Mr. Jim was talking about that he's seen where people have steamed too much and then put their hand down and, oh, and left careful. the impression of their hand. The handprint will be <laughs> on it. If, you, if the garment is still warm from the steam and you do something with it, you can leave your handprint on the garment. Permanently. Now, what happens is the pile just pop back up. They, you know, oh, we try and rub it and scratch it. And I've done it in several different, several different ways. And one of the ways that I use, I take a whisk broom. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I take a whisk broom. If, if I get an imprint, I take a whisk broom real quick. I put a little steam. I don't put it on the garment. I raise it up a little, let the steam get it, and then whisk it real quick. And that, what that does is softens up the nap again. Oh, that's a very good, uh, isn't that like the little corn broom? Like the little, well, the you little, can use any, any kind of, any kind of whisk broom, okay. a whisk broom, okay. not a roller, because a whisk broom is nothing but the, the, like a broom. Yeah, yeah it just goes in there and it breaks yeah, it up. Very it breaks good it up. So keep one of those near your iron board. Um, mm -hmm. And also consider the fact what type of, you know, blend of velvet you're using. Mm -hmm. Because think about it, if you just have a regular acetate, because they may, may make velvets with acetate they and other do. kind of they blends do. in them. But think of it if you had a non-velvet like acetate fabric. If you add too much heat to that, what happens? It melts. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, you are melting some of those fibers and you're changing them and damaging them. They're not going to rebound in some, some cases. Yeah. So you really want to be very careful. So again, now that we, we didn't mean to terrorize you, but we just put that out there. Be careful. It's easy though. Um, so essentially when you're pressing on any raised surface, consider using again a pressing surface that is raised in of itself. Right. Mr. Jim has the illustrious like 80 plus dollar vel uh, needle board, right? It's a needle board. It's, it's a is. really fancy yeah. one. So yeah. you've probably seen it as wood and it has like the raised spike needles. Mm -hmm. It's like the mm -hmm. best thing to use. Now for us cheap people like myself, <laughs> I found this. June Taylor used to make this years ago. It's called a Velva board. It's very, uh, kind of hard to get your hands on one of these, but I'm so happy, you know, thank God for eBay, right? Mm -hmm. Bought this a few years back. And essentially it almost looks like, you know, velvet itself. Mm -hmm. And it's a flat board, mm -hmm. so it's like a flat back. You can lay it out, it'll get straight if you lay it, but it's essentially raised. So it also has a nap on it and a yeah. piling. Yeah. And then you just lay your fabric on top. If you need to press and seam open, and like, let's pretend there's a seam there. 
And you just lay it on top and you just gently press. And when you press, you don't collapse any of the fabric no, underneath you, you because don't. the piling you is don't. in the surface. Never try and press these type of garments on the top side. No, oh, no, no, you, you can leave them. Well, some people yeah, do. Yeah, you're right. You can leave a serious If you have there. wrinkles in your garment there, try and steam them on the back side. That's right. You know? or you and know. when I say steaming, not put the iron on it, put it uh, close to it and let the steam, let a lot of steam come out. And when you let the steam come out, then you need to stroke it gently. That's right. Stroke it gently. And if you're nervous or you're heavy handed, you can also throw this over your shower rack. You know, pull back mm -hmm. the shower curtain, throw it over your shower rack, turn the hot, hot water, water on for a little bit, and mm -hmm. just let it hang <laughs> and straighten itself That's if it. you're a little nervous. Um, but Mr. Jim's actually totally right as far as, uh, you know, iron touching your velvet, you want to kind of keep that to right. the minimum. And I love the fact that he mentioned just use the point the of your point iron. The little point on the iron. Just yeah. to kind of touch those um, mm -hmm. in between the seams. And if you don't have a velvet board or a needle board, then your standard towel will work just fine. It, I used a will. towel for a it lot will. of years. It has a And, and like I say, just use the tip of the iron. Because if you lay it down the full flat surface and you glide it, what you're doing is, especially with the steam coming out, that trail of steam now if you turn it back over on the other side you got the width of the iron that has changed the direction of the velvet with and the holes of the iron and and like imp the like holes impressioned the iron, in there <laughs> the width of the iron and it's like a slot yeah so yeah and no one wants to walk around with a jacket no with the, you got it you see this wide strip down what happened there yeah well that's that's from the iron that's all that is that's right so anyway, so pressing techniques, that's pretty much all there is. It's really not complicated. When you press, use a light press surface, and then don't put a lot of pressure on the iron. No, no. And if you have a really good steaming iron, really depend on that steam, a good burst of that, and then use your fingers, like right in between that crease, to just kind of press it press down. Press it down, yeah. Move your yeah. hands away. Yeah, another thing that I do too, like I say, once I put some steam on it, I'll take my fingernail, and I'll scratch it down. Oh, see, that's a good right one in the right, right in, in the crease. crease there, and that'll flatten it out a little bit. It's not too bad to actually press. It'll lay down with mm -hmm. some adequate steam. So mm -hmm. don't think you need a lot of heavy, heavy pressure. Mm -hmm. And then speaking of pressure, we I forgot to mention earlier when you were talking about sewing. Keep in mind, if your pressure foot is too heavy on your fabric while you're sewing, mm -hmm. you will leave a dog on like skid mark. I mean, you, I promise. You will. You, will, you, <laughs> you know. will. You know how so, you, you, you know, you're driving along and you see a skid mark in the road yeah. where a person hit their brakes so quick. That's exactly what it, it looks You'll like a skid that. mark. Yeah, so you don't want to do that. So be careful of the pressure surrounding that foot as you're sewing. If it's too heavy, lift that a little bit. We don't want like a, you know, like you said, like a little road strip mark on your fabric. That wouldn't mm. be good. Um, but I think that pretty much covers everything. Yeah. Um, as far as fraying, you know, to serge something so it doesn't fray. Yeah, you, you can finish your seams by using bindings. Mm -hmm. And if it's lined, it's not going to mm -hmm. unravel too badly on you. Use base thread. Use basing thread, absolutely. So I think that pretty much covers it. Go out and explore the world of velvets mm -hmm. and, you know, Anytime you start research, if you don't know a lot about something, then, you know, grab a great book, One, talk, some to, guy. talk some to guy. a great expert, run to Joann's and just touch everything, kind of learn, get your senses, kind of, you know, mm -hmm. adjust it to that. Take home squat swatches, test everything before you Always sew. Test. Always test. Test your stitch, test your steaming, test yeah. everything, yeah. just to make sure you're good and then proceed with your garment. Right, so because once you've cut your garment out of the fabric, you got all those scraps. That's right. Grab a scrap, test it with the iron. Grab a scrap, put the two pieces together, sew the scrap to see the consistency of the stitch and everything before you just, well, I'm just going to jump on this because it's cut out. You got all those scraps. Be careful because, like we say, this can be costly, and if you make an error, then it costs you again. See? So try and use all the precautionary methods that you can use and always remember anything you sew before you just jump on it test everything test, test the pressing exactly. test the stitch make sure there's a stitch that you use is just right for the exactly. for the fabric that you use rather than just cut it out pick up the garment and start to sewing 
it's better to take that little time in the beginning. Absolutely. Than waste a lot of time in the end. Because if it doesn't stitch the way you want it, you stitch it, then you have to take it out. Then you have to restitch it again. And then it's going to show up because yeah, it's velvet. It's and velvet. you can't really take stuff mm -hmm. apart without it being a problem. So, yeah. okay, so I think that covers pretty much everything. And the only thing we really didn't talk about was pre-treatment. And that's always kind of controversial when it comes to fabrics. So we will leave it up to you and your wisdom. But I have read sometimes that some velvets do shrink, specifically like cottons. Yeah. So you can do your usual pre-shrink technique if you want to give a little steam test. To Miss Jen's point, I think it's always great to cut like something out and then you can test like a four by four square. A lot of mm -hmm. people test that. If you want to wash it, test it, see what happens yeah, afterwards. Yeah. If you want to shrink it to see if it actually shrinks, test it. Test, test, yeah, test, yeah. make sure you're good. Yeah. Um, Let me add one thing too. We were talking about it. On a lot of the real high power velvet, opposed to the velveteens, the velours and whatnot, like I said, it depends on the garments you make, where you wear it, and how you wear it. Now, a lot of times, if a lady makes a dress out of velvet, they'll stand most of the evening. <laughs> because what happens is, when they sit down in the dress, the imprint from their rear will print onto the garment because now it has crushed the velvet down. That imprint is not going to come out, okay? So you have to be careful, once again, like I say, what you're making the garment out of. The occasion that the garment is going to be That's worn. Very true. You can't make a velvet something and go to the office and sit in an office chair all day long. The imprint from the bottom, the back, the arm, if the arm is on, it's got sleeves in it, the arm is on the armrest, That's all true. of that, everything will crush down, will not come up in regular velvet. Now the velours and some of the other yeah. velveteens, you're a little safer. That's right. But you have to always be careful. What is the occasion that I'm aware this at? Excellent advice. And I think that's excellent advice to end this show on. So we hope this information was pretty helpful to everybody. We enjoy presenting it. Mm -hmm. And we will, of course, see you next week. See you again. I am Victoria Baylor, your professional dressmaker. Gentleman Jim, your tailor. Take care. See you okay. next week.